In Rails version 5.1 and above, Rails no longer ships with jQuery by default like it used to. And so in this guide, we're going to walk through how to install jQuery, but there are many ways of doing that. You could even just bring the jQuery file directly into your set of JavaScript files and then require it, and technically that would work. However, the reason why the Rails core team decided to pull jQuery out was to give us as developers more flexibility in how we could manage our assets such as our JavaScript files and our CSS files. And so what we're going to do in this guide is not just add jQuery, but we're going to see how we can bring in and build out an entire asset management system by using tools such as Webpack and Yarn and integrating those directly into our application. And so we're going to start off with a brand new application. And as I'm going through this guide, I'm going to be building it all in Vim and Tmux. And so you can follow along perfectly fine. Nothing's going to be any different if you're using Sublime Text or Atom or VS Code or anything like that. The only reason why I'm doing this is so that I don't have to keep switching windows. And also, this is how I develop my applications on a day-to-day -day basis. So that could give you a little bit of insight on how I work. And so what we have here is I don't have any application. I'm going to build this from scratch. And also, we need to make sure that we have the correct set of dependencies installed on our system. So if you're on a Mac, then in the terminal, if you have Brew installed, you need to make sure that you have Yarn already on your system. And so you can say Brew install Yarn, and that's going to bring the Yarn package manager onto your system. Now, I already have this, so it's simply going to go through and tell me, should tell me that everything's just up to date, or it may upgrade it if it needs a new version. If you do not have Yarn on your system, it'll take a little while to install it. And as you can see right here, it says no changes were made to the formulae, and I already have that. So with that in place, and if you're on a PC or you're using a tool like Nanobox or C9, then you can go and have the Yarn installations, uh, and I'm going to place those in the show notes so that you can go install that. Now, with all of that in place, let's go and let's build out the application. So I'm going to say Rails, New, and let's call this Demo JS. Rails app and some of the flags I'm going to set are going to be dash dash webpack and so that means we're going to use webpack and the webpack tool to manage and bundle our assets and so that is going to change from the default behavior of Rails. So I'm going to say I want webpack to bundle the assets and then I want to have the database as usual set up for PostgreSQL. And then lastly, I do not want the default tests, so dash capital T. And now I'm going to run this. It's going to go install the full application, and I'll fast forward through that as it runs through. And it looks like everything was built out. Now, you may have noticed that when we use the Webpack tool, that brought in a whole set of other dependencies. And we'll walk through some of those throughout this guide. But for now, let's just switch into that application. And let's create the database. So let's say Rails DB create. And then right after, we can migrate the database. Rails DB migrate. And after that is done, now we can have our yarn tool add jQuery. So the command for that's going to be yarn add jQuery. So yarn is a package manager. So it's going to go, it's going to find the jQuery library, and it's going to pull it 
into our application. And as long as you don't see any errors, warnings are fine, but as long as you get the success message and you don't get any errors, that means that everything should have worked. So if I click on Vim here, and you can open this up in Sublime Text. If I come down, and if, if you see a yarn lock file, this means that your yarn installation worked. And so it looks like everything was installed properly. So that is the first part. We still have a little ways to go, but when we see that the yarn file was created, that is a good sign. So now that we have that, now we actually have to install jQuery using yarn. So the command for that is Rails, because this is a Rails command. And so I'm gonna say Rails yarn install. And so I'm going to run this. And one other note, you need to make sure that you have a node installed on your system. So there's a very good chance that you already have node installed on your system. But if you're on a Mac, you can just type brew install node and that will install the node system and NPM for you. But uh, if you've gone through a number of tutorials and different things like that, you might already have it on your system. But it looks like everything there worked. So we are moving along very nicely. The next step is gonna to be to add the jQuery Rails gem. So I'm gonna open up the gem file here and I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom, type gem jQuery dash Rails and then I'll run bundle, which will go grab that dependency and bring it into our system. And so that looks like it all worked. Now we need to go and we need to open up our app, assets, JavaScripts, application JS file. And we need to make a few changes here. First, we need to add jQuery at the very top. So we're gonna say slash slash equals require jQuery. And then the line right below it, we need to change this one because we're not using rails dash UJS, but instead we're gonna use jQuery underscore UJS. And so save that file. And so that's everything that we need to do inside of the application JS file. And now we need to install Webpack or Webpacker. So I'm gonna say Rails Webpacker install. And this is now going to go, it's gonna create the configuration file and it's gonna bring in everything that we need for Webpacker and it's gonna go find each one of those dependencies and those libraries and it's quite a bit. Webpack is, there's a reason why it's so popular right now. It's incredibly flexible in what it can allow you to do and it allows you to have all of your assets and everything in the application bundled and this is something, it's not just for Rails applications. Uh, Webpack is incredibly popular in the Angular and in the React React and view worlds as well. So that's good to keep in mind. So now with all of this set up, we can test to see if it's working. So I'm going to create a controller. So I'll say Rails G controller. And I'm just going to call it pages, give it an action of home. So this is going to go and build out all of that for us. And before we test anything else out, let's just make sure that this is working. So let's come type Rails S. Oh, it looks like I'm in the desktop. Make sure you're in the directory. So Rails S. So this is gonna start up the Rails server, assuming we don't have any errors, and it looks like we are good. So if I switch over into the browser and say localhost 3000 pages and home. If I come here, this should load up, yes, the default. And if I open up the JavaScript console, as long as you don't have any errors here, this is a very good sign. If you didn't bring in JavaScript proper or uh, jQuery in properly yet, or if you have any errors in that application JS file, then you might see some errors here. And if you do, then make sure you just go check, make sure you don't have any typos and that you ran 
all of those installers. So now that we have that, we can actually test out our jQuery implementation. So I'm going to open this up and let's open our main file. So it's just our home file. And if you're wondering about the path, you can go to app, views, pages, and then home. And I'm gonna get rid of both of these. And I off screen, I created a little bit of HTML for us. So let me paste that in so you don't have to just watch me type all of it. So right here, I just have a very basic set of HTML code. So I have a div that has a class of container. I have some lorem ipsum text in the middle. And then I have a button with an ID of toggle button. And then it says hide content. So if I hit save here and switch back into the browser and hit refresh, you can see we have the HTML and I have the button. Now, right now it's not wired up to anything. That's what the jQuery is gonna do. But the goal is that I should be able to click this button and then it should have the content here fade away. So that's what we're gonna build now is the jQuery code for that. So let's come into our app, assets, then JavaScripts and pages. So right now in pages, we just have the default here set up. So I'm going to get rid of these comments and let's write some a very basic jQuery function. So I'm gonna say ready equals, and I'm gonna use a arrow function here. And then we'll say dollar, and we're looking for toggle button. So, uh, and if you want to, you can look at this at the same time. So app views, pages, home. So we can see this code right above it. And so I can say a dollar and uh, so the syntax for this, this is just jQuery right here. So I'm gonna say dollar and then parens, I'm gonna find my selector. So I'm looking for that toggle button and it's an ID. So I'm gonna say pound toggle dash BTN and that's a string. So I'm gonna close it off and this is gonna be a click listener. So I'm gonna say dot click and then down below it, I want to then find our container. So I'm gonna say dollar and then in a string container and it's a class. So I'll start it with a dot and then I'm just gonna use the function fade out and it's a function. So in order to execute it, we need to have parens at the very end and then I'll type return. And now in order to get this working and loading at the right time, we need to add some document ready uh, type of script here. So I'm gonna say dollar document dot ready, ready. So this is mapped directly to this ready function. And all we're saying here is that whenever the document's finished loading, that is when we want to call this function. Because if not, if this JavaScript loads too early, then what could happen is it would look for this toggle button right here. And so it would try to find this HTML, but if it, this HTML didn't load yet, then it's not gonna be able to find it. And so then our script wouldn't work. So I'm gonna say document ready. And then we also need to prepare it to work with turbo links for rails. So I'm gonna say document dot on and then turbo links just like this and then turbo links colon load. And so this is just a way of working around the Rails Turbo Links JavaScript library. And so we're saying that we want to make sure that Turbo Links will not block this from working. So that is saved and we still have the Rails server running. So if I switch over here to the browser, uh, let's refresh the page. And as long as you don't get any errors here, that's good. And now if I click hide content, you'd see that you see that's working. So that is perfect. So what that means is that we're listening for this button click event and then it is going and it's fading out this content. And that means that everything's working. We have JavaScript working perfectly. We have jQuery installed and we also are using the more advanced tools like Webpack and Yarn. And before we finish this guide, 
let's actually take a look at what that brings us. So I'm gonna close out of assets and let me close this file here. If you, you your application may look very similar at this stage but it's actually quite a bit different. So if you come down here, there are some more directories that usually you would not see. So here we have a config directory and inside of initializers, you can come and you see everything here looks pretty much the same. But then if you come, we have another directory called Webpack. And so Webpack has a development JS file, an environment, a production, and a test one. So this is where we can customize how Webpack works in different environments. Uh, because Webpack, because it's trying to make your code as uh, efficient as possible, it's gonna work different on your local machine versus when you'd push it up to production. And if you come down here to webpacker.yaml, you'll see that we have all kinds of various extensions and configuration items. And all of this was generated when we did that webpack install. And so that is something that is very helpful. If you've ever used webpack before in tools like React or Angular, the way that Webpack is integrated into Rails to me is actually even easier than those other tools. Now this may not look easy and that's perfectly fine. Uh, it takes a while to get used to it, but I compare this file to the way that Webpack works in a React file and I think you'll agree with me because it, you only need about half the code in a Rails application. It works very nicely compared with some of the other options. Now, what this also does is it brings in node modules. So this is your full set of tools that JavaScript and Webpack uses in order to bundle all of your assets. And so this is something that uh, right now it's working locally when you push it up to Heroku or whatever your production environment is, then it will do all of this for you on the fly. Couple other things to note here. Uh, if you open up your git ignore file, this added a few things to this git ignore file. Notice that the node modules directory was automatically added along with some of the yarn items. Now, if you are looking to deploy this on Heroku, then this public slash packs directory here this may need to be removed from Git Ignore. I've run into a few issues with that before, so uh, you may want to experiment with that. If you build out your entire application like this and then you cannot deploy it to Heroku, then removing this line right here may help it. So just kind of keep that in mind. And so that is pretty much it. There's only one more file and that's our package JSON file. This is something that Webpack looks at to see if there are any custom scripts or any additional dependencies. So if you add any other kinds of libraries, JavaScript specifically uh, kind of libraries, uh, then they'll get added here. And then this is what the node modules is generated off of. So when the entire node module process occurs, so when all of these different directories like what we have right here, when these are generated, those are all taken from what is inside this package JSON file. So that is how you can install not just jQuery, uh, that's kind of the vehicle that we use to learn about it, but th that's how you can install Webpack and Yarn, and then later on you can learn how to integrate all other kinds of libraries. And it gives your entire Rails application a lot of power because now you can use tools like React or V or these other kinds of JavaScript libraries and you can bring them in and it's a much more natural fit compared with trying to do it all manually. You can leverage all of the different tooling that Webpack gives you and you can build your applications that way.